Swallow. Good morning. Cold start. Cold start. Four degree cold start. Uh, Keeney's already been down here and started it. Oh, okay. Would have had to get the, uh, the jump back get out. Get the easy start out. <laughs> 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 other, good, other brands are available. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing today then, Skip? Scalloping and then maybe some McRick if it's nice enough. It's a little bit choppy, but. Uh, it's not good, I can see my breath. <laughs> it's been a cold week, that is for sure. Yeah. Just three of us today. The three M's Matt, Mish, and me. Going north. Yeah, miss. You all right? Yeah. Air's turned off. Dive out ready. Okay. Welcome back below the sea. This location's called Boagenor. Well, actually, we're on the edge of Refe. And we call it Refe Desert. We're heading in the northwesterly direction towards Boagenor, which it can be a really, really good dive. But looking at the light levels now and the really fine silt that gets kicked up, I don't think we're going to have a very good time looking for it. Fingers crossed. There is actually some decent sized scallops up this way. There's thin pickings, but they are large. Now the seabed along here is very bland. It is literally just a desert. Sometimes you find some old bottles. In this case, I wasn't so lucky. Quite a modern bottle. It hasn't taken us long to find the first part of the reef. Just look how dark it is, and this really fine silt's given a horrible backscatter. I don't think we're going to stay around here very long. Just as we're about to swim off, Mish notices something. To be honest, I didn't actually see it. Not until she had to point it out to me. Let's go back and have a little look. Spot it in all the gloom. Just down here. It's quite weird because I always see crayfish off the bottom of the reef. They're never really on the bottom. And this one, there's a little tiny baby that's managed to find a little crack to go in. Here he is, just here, hidden. Probably no bigger than my thumb, maybe. Pretty cool to see. Even in uh, January, he's starting to see them. Also find some of these old oyster shells around here. There we go, this is what we're after. That's another thing I've noticed around here, the scallop seemed to be actually up on the surface. Probably buried there, but now kicked itself up. We're starting to get a few, but I'm not holding my breath too much because around here is not actually that good. We'll have a quick look around here, and then I think I'm probably gonna call it. Might give it another minute or so, let Mish have a look around the reef, because she's actually well into her photography. Oh, what do we have here? Now at the moment, I seem to see one on every single dive now. I don't know if I've now in tune with seeing these things. Not that they're really hard to see, and I'm, I suppose any diver probably sees them all the time, but... I seem to see one on every single dive now, which is cool. Normally I'd just have a look at it and just leave it. Sometimes I'd pull it up, lift it up, so so anyone else that comes along can see it a little easier. But because of with Mish, I think I'm gonna send this one up. She can crack it.
So, I managed to get my bag out, my mesh bag, and I sent it up on a lift bag. Not many scallops, I know. When we got back to the surface, I realised that Matt was uh, shaking his head in disapproval. So I don't think my... Well, maybe my lift bag did come to the surface, but it sunk straight away again. Had to go back down to retrieve it. My uh, lift bag emptied of air. So I had to go diving back down to it. Lockheed Matt put a mark on the plotter, so I found it quite easy. Good to get one. Yeah. Is it a cannibal, do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a nice shape one. Oh. Still quite round as well. Oh, what we got there? A cop coral. Oh well, we're gonna uh, we'll crack it and then chop that back in the sea. Just get a hammer for this to smash open her first cannibal. What does it smell like? Nothing yet. It's gonna smell horrible. Let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, give it a good whack. Smell it. Doesn't smell that bad actually. That can all go back. <laughs> Chuck straight back over the side. Yeah, it's all good. It's a nice little cannonball. Matt is on shot duties. So. <laughs> Go ahead. So we got to be quick because it's 11.30 and the, um, well it's not now, it's 10.40 too. 11.30 the islander goes, so we're going to listen in on 12. I'm going to put one diver in and then we'll reassess. Reassess what's going on. See how far we are and what we're doing. It's going to be a quick 20 minute for Matt. There's the buff. Worst job in the world. Gonna tie in. Oh, there's a gunner. On your own in the dark. The viz is good. Thirty seconds and he's ready to dive. Put the old Daffy Ducks on. Bat wings. Oh yeah, the bat wings are up. There we go, bat wings down. Like Matt's in the wreck because we've dropped from 30 meters up to 24 so so that's definitely the wreck so it's just because it's changed scale but you can see air bubbles coming off which is Matt and this is the shipwreck it's almost on the uh, hydrographic marks but they never they never are completely change the tank for Mish change the tank for me just wait for Matt to come back up Sorry. 
Bournemouth isn't very good. No. <laughs> 15 minutes from match back. Tied in. No, it's not. It's not tied in. I'm not tied. Oh, okay. Shot back on board. Visibility's that bad, we're not going to waste the tank, unfortunately. So let's go and find something to dive over here. I'm sure there's loads for us to dive. It's bitterly cold on my fingers. Oh. Warmer underwater, that's for sure. So we settled on a location just inside Soldiers Bay. I don't think I've actually dived this close in before, uh, but we're very shallow, probably less than 10 metres. And one thing I do notice is all the life that's on the bottom. So we're at a nice flat sand, almost desert like a game like Refe. But there is decent sized scallops here, as you can see. But also there's loads of other critters here. So in this picture I can see a netted whelk, um, a hermit crab, a scallop, and a sea hare as well, which is this black one above the scallop. But we're only collecting scallops today, so I'll take that. Probably worth mentioning it, we're not really going for um, scallops. Um, well, if we see scallops, we'll take scallops, but we're actually coming down to do a little bit of uh, photography, a little bit of filming, and just see what life's like here when it's a little bit shallower. So there's all sorts here. There's a brittle star hidden in the sand. And me and Mish are working together to show each other what's there. Just point it out, point some few things out. A bit like what me and Phil do. Phil points stuff for me to film. There's loads of hermit crabs. And these are netted whelks, these smaller shells. Both of these have got really good noses and can pick out uh, rotting food from miles away especially the netted whelks they got a proboscis that comes out the front like a little nose that injects enzymes into what it wants to eat basically uh, turns it to a soup and then sucks it up there's also loads of these sea hares as well These sea hares are actually herbivores, so they won't be eating flesh. The seaweed that they do graze on can actually turn them purple, so they've got like an iodine colour sometimes when you accidentally stand on them, or, or sometimes they can actually eject it out towards you. So these aren't nudibranchs, they're completely separate to nudibranchs. Also you do see big long chains of them. Um, they look kind of weird when they're in a big long chain, but they're actually mating, so the one in front uh, mates with the one behind. But they're also actually hermaphrodites as well, so they don't actually need it to mate with anyone. Just to see this one here that's attached to a hermit crab by the looks of it. There's not much seaweed from to feed here, so I'm not quite sure why they're all around this area. These are sand brittle stars and there are actually a few different species of brittle star and they live on sandy seabeds just like this one. There's a few different types of uh, mollusk here. There's a purple top shell which is the one at the bottom. These things are commonly seen on the seashore to be honest. Um, they also graze on seaweed. There's loads of crab pots around here right in the shallows. We're actually looking for Jason's uh, crab pot if we see one, which has been lost. He's from Inshore Fishing Guernsey if you want to check his video out. Check out this cast of hermit crabs. So many, scurrying all over the seabed. Obviously looking for waste food. Given all the crab pots are here, they're probably looking for the waste out of the crab pots.
every so often we'll come across a small tuft of seaweed and it's completely covered in life. There's all sorts there. Also these mass crabs. Unfortunately I think this mass crab might be dead. Point it out to Mish but it looks very furry which is kind of a good indication that it's probably died. Let's take a closer look. I'd say that one's actually expired. Oh well, that's unfortunate. Give him a little tickle. Yep, I think he's gone. There's a few around here though, there's another one there. Is this one dead? Weird, another one that's dead. There's a sea hare just rolling by. Right, this one's going to be really hard to see. So I mentioned there's loads of little tufts of seaweed every so often. On this one, what I've noticed is a pipefish. And this is a worm pipefish, which is our smallest variety. Can you see him just there on the right hand side? You can see him just, just moving his head. So this is where I wish I had my macro lens. Plenty of little leather. Uh, tubes, which are probably tube worms or some sort of fan worms. Again, ever from around here, you just got to slow right down and have uh, keep your eyes peeled for everything. But I can still notice a scallop from two meters. It looks too small. It's also got a slipper limpet onto the top. Oh well, let's carry on. No, I'm going to take it. It looks big enough. Also others as well. You can see them from quite far away. Telltale sign of blowing out the sand. Always gives them away. Oh, starting to get into a nice little stamp of them now. This one's got black stuff on the side. This black stuff is, I don't know, something in the sand. Not quite sure what it is. It doesn't taint the taste of them. They still taste really good. probably picked up thousands of these things they really are weird a couple of hundred eyes frill sticking out the side they've been around for millions of years and this one's huge try and get all the sand out of it it's massive in the bag you go a big hermit crab. See these big hermit crabs are always in whelk shells. The shells are common whelk shells, not dog whelks. There is so many crab pups down here. There's actually truces of them, big long rows of them, just left. Now artificial reefs, covered in different things spider crabs, hermit crabs, sea hares. Again, hermit crabs are really weird too. I reckon they should have a program on TV, it's just hermit crabs fighting each other. That's all they seem to do. Very argumentative hermit crabs. Running around knocking into each other. Stealing each other's homes. It's 
a long-legged spider crab on this one as well, just to the right, into where the door was. This type of pot is a parlour pot. You can tell it's like a long D. The other ones that look like a, a dome in a way, or well, look like inkwells, are called inkwells, believe it or not. You can see here there's uh, all the ropes have all come to the centre. Looks like there's three crab pots on this. All of them are completely destroyed. And now the buffs are down at about eight metres, just sitting there. Forgotten. Holding buoyancy just about. There is actually sea growth growing on the ropes now. So it's been down here for some time. I'm guessing maybe 18 months, two years. Could be longer. But look, what do we have in here? We have at least one lobster. So this is ghost fishing pretty much. I think we do the the same thing that all the other do oh there's more it's free it's free in here no doubt they are fighting each other this one looks like a, yeah, a krill pot looking at the necks that lead in just check it doesn't go right to the surface nah that's definitely definitely trapped here this is a big old long pot not quite sure if it was a store pot nah actually it couldn't be a store pot because it's got en entry points in it let's try and rip it open absolutely crusted together might have to ah there it goes now these lobsters would be really horrible probably really soft and really manky let's have a look at it yeah it's been fighting it's lost a claw loads of damage on it looks like a little male even the end of the claw has gone you're free now go oh looks like you're trying to give me a high five and he's gone straight back in the pot. See if we can push the door right down flat. The other two, I'm not going to hassle them. Just leave them in there. I think Mish has got that door open. In fact, that looks like that other smaller lobster's gone over to Mish to give her a high five. Problem is, when, they, when lobsters are left in pots like this, and they've been in for some time, they actually go really horrible and manky. Um, and some of the flesh can even go black. So I'm not even going to entertain taking any of these. Even though this one on this side is absolutely huge. It's a huge lobster. Two decent claws. And this one. Two decent claws. This one might even gonna actually be a female. Oh well. We'll leave you go. We'll leave you go free. It's a shame really, that's just ghost fishing in a way. Still got loads of air left. Oh, that's why. I'm only in 6.8 metres of water. Done 22 minutes already on this dive as well. This is one of them dives where you can probably stay here a good hour and a half. We're not going to get very boring for you. And very boring for me. And also very cold. Here we can see them, they're all feasting on the seaweed. There's also a bit of seagrass mixed into that. is the inkwell variety. Same again, you can see where it ties onto the strap has actually been cut, so there's no spinner on this one either. So I'm guessing this one's probably been end of life and someone's cut it and just let it sink to the seabed. There's a few things inside, some small spider crabs. There's also some, some lot, quite a bit of life on the outside as well. Isn't it an enemy growing here? Again, another small artificial reef. 
Mish has found a empty spiny cockle shell. That's something living inside it. One of my favourite things under the sea is a baby cuttlefish. This is actually a cuttlefish that is a baby rather than the, the small ones we see. Prime example of the old pot bait that the fishermen take out the crab pots and just chuck it over the side. So you can see here there's a few hermit crabs and netted whelks trying to fight over it. I'm not quite sure what fish that was, possibly a bream. A, there's enough food there for everyone. They'll still fight over it though. this weird object. I thought it was a massive long shark from really far away. I thought that's a bit weird. A bit of petrified wood. And this is the reason I thought it was a shark because this little fin bit on the back. See there's two. There's one there and one here. This must have come down off the cliff sometime. Believe it or not we don't actually see that much driftwood in the sea around Guernsey. We haven't really got any large beaches um, which would uh, Wood, wooded areas close to it because our islands are uh, pretty much battered by the wind so trees when they grow on the coast they grow at 45 degrees angles pretty cool though almost looks like a, a whale bone of some sort but it's definitely a tree squid just come past me and this is the black stuff it lets out called uh, sepia so it's like a like an oily sort of inky stuff and there's a common otter shell I don't think I've ever seen one of these alive it's probably because they're buried under the sand and they don't come out much when they do come out they get eaten pretty quick now I've seen this type of seabed on the west coast quite a lot uh, this is like ripples ripples in the sand almost looks like it's been ploughed by a farmer but I've never really seen it on the east coast it's probably because we're in a lot closer than we normally are. And there'd be abnormalities with the tide coming around the outside of this uh, this little outcrop of, um, I suppose, cliff. Probably plenty of clams hidden inside this. This is prime, prime clam at land. There's an orma shell, a small orma shell. Soft sand with gravel on the top. One thing that's quite weird with this is the symmetry, this, the action of the water. I mean, not perfect lines, but it stops and starts perfectly. It is a little bit wavy. You can imagine this is what the surface of the water is like. Take a look at this, it's like someone's planting potatoes. Not perfectly straight lines, but fairly good. But on the ends, look at that. A perfect straight line where it starts and stops. And the sea is a weird place. Thinking about it, this is probably a really good place to get uh, razor clams as well. Looking at the shells, don't know you'd get them underwater. I've never fished for razor clams underwater. Squirting salt down a hole wouldn't work down here. This is the sort of seabed you get some nice turbot or nice brill on. Be interesting to um, take a note of where this this uh, seabed is. So I wouldn't mind coming through here and looking for some flatfish. Looks like a prime location. Don't know what that was. Something just moved in the sand. Is this a queenie? No. Nope. this looks like iron I'm attracted to iron I love rust 
Rust underwater normally means man-made, and man-made normally means shipwrecks. Well, I'm not quite sure what that thing was. There's a few chunks around here. Probably waste that someone's thrown off of uh, Fort George. Another chunk here. I don't know why I'm attracted to rust, but I am. Right, I'm not quite sure where we are now in the world. I know we're on the east coast of Guernsey, but I'm not sure how far we've swum or what direction we've swum because I haven't really been looking at my compass. Plus, me and Mish has done a few circles here, there, and everywhere. Oh, what's this? It's just a rock. And that's it. As soon as we're into this rough bit of uh, sand, we're pretty much back off of it. These are weird shells. That one, I think, was a telling shell. And then onto the normal seabed again. So I think Mish is getting cold. I'm certainly getting cold. So I think we're going to call it a day here. Let's head back up to the surface. Oh, not as close as I thought we were to the cliff. Just above us is Fort George. Right, my other camera. Jake. Dolphin, just there. Just there, dolphin. Dolphin, dolphin. <laughs> No, they're coming. They're hey! Coming. Come back! Come back, please! Oh. Matt, we need to say we haven't seen dolphins in a while again. <laughs> I thought you were joking when you are like, Dolphins, dolphins! I was like, what, over there? <laughs> That's our normal joke. Dolphins. Where did they go? Yeah. <laughs> There was actually dolphins. Where are they gone? They didn't want to play today. Oh, I can't believe that. That is. Yeah. Kill a whale. How many was there? Three, four? Four of them. Oh, that was good. That was awesome. <laughs> Got a lot of dolphins. You know what it would have made better, Mish? If we'd seen him down there. <laughs> it's about time we headed in now. Maybe go to the cafe. If you're new to this channel and you liked what you've seen just then, um, please subscribe. If not, please leave a comment. I love chatting to the subscribers. Stay safe and I'll catch you on the next tide.